What is up everybody, Golden Yogi here, and you are tuning into the channel with the Golden Perspective. Today I'm out, uh, not so sunny California, on a little uh, excursion on a lake, undisclosed. Um, and anyway, uh, I wanted to share with you, I was going over the recent Glassnode um, report yes it was from monday and it's thursday right now and maybe you're seeing this now on friday or something um but hey uh here it is so let's go take a look at it one second as i bounce over to this okay so uh the week on chain week uh week 25 of 2021 on chain activity Falling back to levels not seen in 12 months, just a seismic shift in Bitcoin hash rate commences in China. Right? We all have heard, most likely, you've heard about uh, the China's new ban. You know, every year they have a new ban on Bitcoin of some sort. Okay, and this time it's to the miners. And so now we see hash rate shutting down. <coughs> and um, so let's continue. The Bitcoin market continues to show relative weakness in both price and on-chain activity this week. Prices have traded within a recent consolidation range, marking down from an early week high of 41295 to a low of 33818 over the weekend. On-chain activity across the board is remarkably low across Bitcoin and Ethereum, with demand for block uh, space falling to levels last seen in 2020. However, whilst low demand for transactions is generally bearish insight, it also reflects an unwillingness of strong hands to spend at these prices. Are they waiting for a relief rally? <clears throat> Simultaneously, <clears throat> excuse me. <clears throat> Simultaneously, a seismic shift in, is underway in the Chinese mining markets as multiple regions enforce bans on the industry. This week, we'll, uh, we will explore the observable on-chain impact of both changes in hash power and miner spending behavior. So you can see right here, we have, this is the range in which we were trading inside this, uh, uh, this kind of pinkish band, okay? Tumbleweeds on, on the chain. So it's very quiet on chain. Both Bitcoin and Ethereum have experienced dramatic slowdowns in on chain activity with active addresses and total transfer volume falling back to 2020 and early 2021 levels. Bitcoin active addresses have fallen by 24% from the generally sustained peak of 1.16 million uh, from March to early May. The current activity of 884,000 addresses was last seen this time last year. For Ethereum, the fall in active addresses has been even larger, dropping 30% from the brief peak of around 776,000 addresses. Activity is now down to 774,000 active, uh, active addresses per day, last seen in Q1 of 2021. So we can see all of this here as well, of active points in the market of active addresses. Uh, for Bitcoin and Ethereum charted out for us. When it comes to USD value settled on the networks, the decline in activity is even more dramatic. Both Bitcoin change adjusted and Ethereum uh, ETH transfers are settling at minus 63% and minus 68% less USD value respectively compared to the recent high set in May. Bitcoin is settling $18.3 billion per day, while uh, Ethereum is settling $5 billion a day in ETH transfers, both demonstrating equivalent volume to quarter one of 2021. Again, we got these nice handy charts so we can visualize the drop from nearly $50 billion per day in settlements down to the 18.3 and ETH down below here. <clears throat> Naturally, the priority fall, or sorry, naturally the priority fees for inclusion in the next block have fallen significantly as network congestion almost completely clears. Bitcoin total fees paid have fallen to just under 30 BTC per day. That's a, a approximately 1.2 million. Um, coincident, coincident, uh, coincident with levels in 2019 and early 2020. This currently represents around 4% of minor revenue with the block subsidy making up the additional 96%. For Ethereum, daily fee revenue has fallen from 15,000 ETH per day in early May to just over 1.9 thousand, which is 4.34 million. This represents about 10% of the total minor revenue being sourced from transaction fees. 
We have to look as far back as June 2020 before uh, DeFi summer to find similar levels in transaction fees paid. Yeah, just before DeFi summer. Okay. So it looks like a lot more, um, you know, ETH miners rely more on these on-chain transaction fees than the block rewards than, uh, than Bitcoin miners do. So supply and spending behavior. <clears throat> From a macro perspective, there are remarkable similarities to the 2017 macro peak in regards to the balance of supply held by long uh, blue, which is shown in blue and short in red term holders, long term, short term holders. The chart below shows the relative supply held by each uh, cohort and whether they are in profit, which is dark colors or loss in light colors. After reaching peak huddle, maximum long-term uh, hold supply, both cycles demonstrated a macro distribution event as BTC wealth is transferred from long-term to short-term holders. After the top was put in, we have sta started to see the opposite effect, where long-term holders stopped spending and began reaccumulating, despite their coins often falling into unrealized loss. Since the uh, $64,000 top, in Bitcoin price, long-term holders are uh, owe an additional 5.25% of the circulating supply, of which 1.5% of this uh, is currently underwater, held as, unre as at an unrealized loss. <clears throat> Despite prices approaching the cost basis for many long-term holders, they continue to hodl on. You can see this here. At different points in time, where so you can see right up here this this was the price of hitting the sixty four thousand dollars and you can see from that point down here oops in in that in that trough right uh in here it's their long-term holders are accumulating and starting to pick up more value okay now that's what someone basically what this is laying out is that's just what someone smart does like if you've been accumulating at these different like this past accumulation levels okay it's okay you know it's fine you held through price ranges because the longer you can hold with bitcoin the more profitable you're going to be if you get shaken out because you think you can make money in other places you never know you never know the future but the trends always show that if you hold for around three years with bitcoin you're going to be happy especially five years if we investigate aggregate spending behavior over the last year, we see the proportion of young coins, those that are less than a year old, excluding less than one day, on the move has continued to increase as a proportion of transaction flow. In the last few months, we see younger coins accounting for over 45% of the total transaction count. This is the most likely a result of newer market entrants, buying the euphoric top and then selling in capitulation and amidst the current choppy conditions. What this metric does show that the most of the current on-chain activity is due to buyers from the last six months spending their coins and realizing losses. You can see this here. All right. Conversely, older coins, those older than a year, have reduced their spending with a notable decline after the May sell-off. This demonstrates the two-sided reality of empty mempools. One, the demand for on-chain settlement is extremely low, generally bearish. However, this also indicates that long-term investors are not bailing out at these prices, which is neutral to bullish. The spent output ban, eight, sorry, the spent output age bands are a particularly useful uh, tool to have on hand uh, should the market experience a strong rally or further capitulation. A primary behavior to watch out for is an it, it, for is in an event where these older coins come roaring back to life such as a relief rally so it may indicate that old hand investors are exiting into liquidity or panic selling which would be a bearish sign if not and their co coins stay dormant during volatility it would be a strong indication that conviction to hold remains in play which is bullish so we really want to watch these long-term holders i mean basically we know that the short-term holders are newer investors they uh they're not used to these volatile market conditions that longer term holders have already seen and been through and know how to play the game. Again, this is how you basically cut your teeth in this market. We explore this and many other cyclical metrics to identify bullish bearish trends in our article on Bitcoin on Bitcoin cycles. To confirm just how insignificant the spending behavior of all coins is, 
We can look into the binary CDD metric with a seven day moving average applied. This metric will trend higher when the volume of coin days destroyed is larger than the long term average. More coin days are destroyed when older coins and or large BTC size are uh, moved on chain. Binary CDD has fallen so low that only one in every seven days is experiencing lifespan destruction above the long-term average. This state has persisted for almost all of June and commenced relatively quickly after the May sell-off, indicating old hands are reluctant to sell at these prices. It also highlights how little demand for block space there is. The entire market appears to be waiting for the next move and few are willing to make the first one. Whichever direction this breaks, the directional response of these lifespan metrics will provide valuable insight into the market bias. They will indicate whether old hands in particular are spending their Ill illiquid coins, taking whatever exit liquidity there is, or if they are holding like Rick Astley. Weekly feature seismic mining shift. Okay. One of the largest migrations of Bitcoin hash power in history appears to be underway following an official ban on mining activities in a number of Chinese provinces. Many miners are in the process of shutting down or migrating the hash power outside of China's borders. Um, you can see a few uh, tweets here. Some mining farms went down in C1 uh, overnight. Quick reactions. The mining ban appears to be as comprehensive as believed. Even hydropowered provinces aren't being spared. Hash rate transition is real and the nature of Bitcoin hash rate will entirely change in the next 6 to 12 months. Okay. Over the past two weeks, the estimated mean hash rate of 7 DMA has declined. Uh, 7 DMA, so 7 daily uh, mean average, has declined around 16%, falling from approximately 155 uh, at a hash, I think that stands for, um, per second maybe estimated hash okay around uh to 125 hash power has fallen uh hash power has now returned to levels that were sustained throughout mid 2020. you see this growth in hash rate and this recent really hard decline okay mean hash rate live chart as them okay that's what we we're just looking at as Chinese mining industry comes to grips with the logistical challenges of relocating migrating or selling their hardware and facilities some are likely to liquidate a portion of their accumulated BTC treasures. These coin sales may represent miners hedging risk, obtaining capital to facilitate and fund logistics, and for some miners, maybe a general exit from the industry entirely. The miner net position change metric shows the 30-day range of change of miner unspent supply. This shows a notable increase in distribution over the last two weeks, generally uh, coincident with the decline in overall hash rate. Miners have on net distributed. Uh, miners have on net distributed at a rate of around 4,000 to 5,000 per month over the last two weeks. This has reversed the trend of net accumulation, which was active since April. Okay, interesting. Let's get back and focus. Okay. Finally, we take a look at the holdings on. Uh, over-the-counter desks, which are so OTC desks, which are utilized by miners for matching their large size distribution with large volume buyers. During both the May sell-off and over the last two weeks, between 3,000 and 3.5 thousand BTC in net inflows have been observed. However, in both instances, almost the full inflow size was absorbed by buyers just over a few weeks. On aggregate, the total BTC holders uh, holdings on OTC desks were. Uh, this, that we monitor have remained relatively flat since April. You can see back here uh, in April where it dropped down and it's been with a couple, you get the height of the May capitulation and then uh, current distribution over on the far right. So if you wanna go and check all this, you can come down here. I highly suggest uh, um, coming and uh, subscribing to this newsletter. I'll get a week uh, an email every Monday. I've been meaning to come and read these to you guys. I know I've been pretty absent in most of the, the bull run that we've been experiencing. Um, you know, 
the fact that this, you know, th this chart or this these charts here and of on chain activity, on chain activity, <laughs> I'm just saying on China activity, really kind of spell out. Um, oops, let's go down to Bitcoin. Okay. Um, you know, they really show that the longer term holders, they have taken most of their profit and they're not, they don't seem to be moving their coins right now. Now that's still, still to be seen. Okay. Um, you know, nobody has a crystal ball, but, uh, if this, if this capitulation is over and we're now moving, um, because something, you know, that we did not see here. So we got, uh, it's Thursday right now. So, um, these last four green days are essentially, um, since this report we just read. Okay. So things have been moving up. All right. Um, we'll, you know, we'll continue to watch and see what happens here. Okay. Um, because, you know, if you look at this, uh, this triangle that was drawn. Okay. Yes. We popped out of the top. We came back down and poked through. Okay. But it got highly rejected and bought up. Okay. So that trend line to me still holds pretty strong. I mean, we could even go and draw one based on, um, on just like candle bodies. Okay. And if you look at something like through, you know, through candle bodies in here, maybe right here, or even, you know, right there as well. I mean, that's more of a channel. If you look at from, you know, from this one up to this one, and it seems to be, you know, following this channel. So if, again, we can break up out of that channel and test the top of it and keep moving, that would be, you know, a bullish sign. Now, if we continue to break down further, Maybe it's just more of this white coffee accumulation, okay? Um, this is all yet to be seen, but again, I think most of the short-term hands that follow the euphoria from around these levels up to the top uh, and kept buying when it was higher and higher and higher, uh, they've pretty much been shaken out at this point, it seems like, and... Uh, fact that there's you know five and a quarter percent accumulation on a lot of the long-term holders again uh it indicates to me that things could be picking back up now that's no guarantee so anyway um thanks for listening today if you have not already please subscribe down below i thank you so much don't forget to turn on the post notifications so you know when the next video is coming up um I'm really, really going to try to keep on these at least once a week uh, when the last known reports come out and keep you updated. Uh, I find this data to be really helpful. Um, also, uh, like, subscribe, share, tell a friend, a family member, whatever it is, and be smart out there, you know. Uh, the smartest ones usually will dollar cost average. Figure out what you can afford. Don't put in more than you can and play it smart. Alright everybody, peace.